the, the minute I decided that I wasn't going to do parkour as a career and I just wanted to do it for fun when I felt like it, that's when training actually became sick and I would go out and yeah, just chill. I'm going to giggle. <laughs> I'm definitely going to giggle. <laughs> Can I do that again? No, that's fine. Because I realised, okay, yeah, cool. Alright. And then you just start. Alright, same questions. Alright, here we go. What other hobbies slash creative outlets do you have? Ooh. Um, other hobbies, creative outlets, I'd say of recent, I've really enjoyed music. Like trying to learn an instrument and trying to sing and hanging out with some people and make music and produce, that's really, that's an art form which I really, really appreciate. And then for work, I guess it was more of a hobby when doing parkour because I think filmmaking and doing media stuff sort of comes with the parkour uh, community and that sort of world. So that's definitely another hobby in which I really, really enjoy. So yeah, so music and film. And then fucking, I used to really love going charity shopping and like outfits and like style and like, like, I don't know, it's sort of doing different things to decorate yourself, whether that's piercings or tattoos and just like what you wear and the way you walk and shit. Like, I love, that's a fun thing to do, sort of like fashion and creating a style. So how fucking cliche, mate. Fucking film, music and fashion, someone kill me. God. <laughs> what are your aspirations for your career in parkour? Um, My aspiration for parkour is to not have a career because I did that, or well, at least I tried doing that. I used to want to make it a career. And I think that made my experience of doing parkour less fun and less fulfilling because I was always stressing myself out, trying to be better than I was or to like create content. And I found that I was going out and doing parkour. Yeah, and just not really enjoying it as much because I was pressuring myself. And, and then I would like, I wouldn't really want to go out and do parkour, but I would go and do parkour because like I need to do parkour because I'm trying to I'm trying to make money from this and also realizing that parkour doesn't really have much of an economy, so it's even harder to make money. Plus, it's a niche. Plus, it's growing sport. So I, I the, the minute I decided that I wasn't going to do parkour as a career and I just wanted to do it for fun when I felt like it, that's when training actually became sick and I would go out and yeah just chill. I don't even train anymore. That's honest, I don't even train anymore really. I can't say I do, but I still really enjoy it. And there'll be a time when parkour becomes more current in my life and I'll be really enjoying it, but there's no pressure, so yeah. Oh, I got the are you happy one. Oh, <laughs> that's such a, that's a, that's such a, it's such a question. Are you happy? I think, uh, I think so. I think I'm just sort of going through life day by day. Sometimes I feel really good. Sometimes I have, you know, up and down. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty good. I definitely feel like I'm going in the right direction. You know how people say like when you get deja vu, it's like you're on the right path. Or shit like that. I've been having like, do you ever have it when dots connect? Like things are happening and dots are like really random, obscure, like things are happening between people and like thing conversations and something you watched or something you heard. I'm getting a lot of that recently. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm on some sort of right path. I'm doing what I want to be doing. I definitely wouldn't want to, every, every time I finish a day, I'm like, why well, wouldn't be doing anything else? Like I'm, I'm happy with this. So. I'm just cool with what's going on. What do you regret and why? Oh, well, that kind of goes back to the happy question. It's like, I'm content with where I am and what's happened in my life to be where I am. So I don't really regret anything overtly. There's nothing I'd be like, oh, I did that, I've done that. I, I, don't, I, I haven't really come to a stage in my life where there's been a big enough decision that I've made and it's had like, a, a, a huge impact. Every decision currently is like lots of thousands of very small decisions. But I'm so young, I'm 21, like I've just come out of like the puberty stage and like nothing, you don't have that much responsibility. There's not too much I can come back 
like can, can come back in terms of consequences from that because that is the time when you learn and grow and make mistakes. So there's nothing yet that I'm like, uh, I, I wish I'd done that. So no, I am perfect. So what is your greatest achievement in parkour? Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty proud of myself because, <laughs> because like I, I'm from London and IMAX is like the most iconic spot. And I'm happy to say that I've done like two things at the spot, which hadn't really been done before. So like the swing gainer pre uh, from the lamppost down to the wall. I remember doing that and that was like a massive achievement. I was like, come on, I just destroyed IMAX. And then also the running 360 pre at IMAX, I was really, really gassed about. What's your worst injury and the story behind it? Parker broke my heart. Do you consider yourself to be a professional at what you do? Uh, I would say yes. I definitely in the last year, I've reached a, a stage in my career of working in film, uh, which is quite broad. I mean, of recent, it's been sort of like, you either come into the industry as a self-shooting director and make it all happen for yourself and, and fit the role of a lot of different roles uh, and make make media happen or you sort of go into the industry which is a bit more archaic and then you become like a focus puller or a producer or there's, you know there's, there's a specific roles you can fill I came into it doing self shooting director which is you learn you do it all you manage every part of it uh, but I'm definitely I'm definitely reaching a stage now where I'm able to sustain myself from it and I'm making work that I'm proud of and I'm working with people that I'm happy with and I'm yeah it's feeling better so I'd say yeah I'm reaching I'm still amateur as shit, but I'm, st I'm, I'm definitely growing and becoming more professional. Who is your biggest inspiration outside of parkour? Someone who's inspired me recently is Wes Anderson. Favorite training shoes and why? Come on. Yes. Uh, I think my favorite parkour shoe, 100%, is Puma Future. I mean, they're, they are, I, I loved them so much. They were like, they're amazing. Not only did I see like break dancers wearing them and just looking so steezy in them. And also when you, if you've ever had Puma Futures, they're just so ideal for movement. They're so light and they feel so good. Got the perfect amount of sponge. And then one other shoe, which um, Marks calls my uh, lost property shoes. Some people call my Buzz Lightyear shoes are these like green bulky ones with like massive a massive sole. And I really enjoyed training them. They didn't like, they weren't ideal for movement, but I really, I really liked training in them because they were like bouncy and I enjoyed how I felt in them. Favorite parkour athlete and why? The, the movement coming out of Scandinavia at the moment is just amazing. I love G-Fam and, and Kipper and all those boys. I've got to say like Simon Pronk, I'm really enjoying his movement at the moment. Yeah. Do you mean uh, Simon from Germany? Is he from Germany? That's his name. The Los Germany's inside of Scandinavia. No, Scandinavia, Just Sweden, and Denmark. No, Germany's not. Yeah, all right. Cut all of that. Uh, Simon Pronk is sick at the moment uh, from Germany. <laughs>